Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jellicent and I'm teabling here for week number 8 of IBL D-League season number 2. Up against Oboe and his Houston Lux is going to do this really quickly because I have like 20 minutes to record this video. But essentially, I've already secured the first seed overall, as well as a playoff bye week, so this game really doesn't mean that much to me. So basically what I did is, I put together a team and the limitation that I put on myself is, I can only run super effective damage reducing berries on Pokemon that are not Mega Lopunny. So on anything else that's not my Mega, we have to have those damage reducing berries, and we'll see how we do right here. So let's go ahead and talk about his roster first. He has a Cartano, which is not too big of a threat, it's naturally checked by Landry's T, Gudra, Shaman, so wouldn't be surprised if he left it off the board, it literally gets hard stopped by all of those. I guess maybe, since it's not a Z-move user, it really can't break through any of them. He has a Milotic right here, which is definitely one of the bigger problems against my team. Stops Landorus T, Weavile, but it's definitely pressured by Shaman, as well as my Thunderous Incarnate, so he has to have some fears with Milotic right there. Miguel Taria is definitely a problem too. I could see a Dragon Nance set coming, I could also see like some sort of Cotton Guard Roost set, but any set could be threatening right here. He can really just run Cotton Guard Roost or Fresh Return if he wants, because he can obviously just go ahead and hit my entire team with Return. My only fairy resistant Pokemon, I believe, is Empoleon and then I guess McMortar, but it's not going to take those returns very well right here, so definitely got to watch out for that set. Cafagrigus right here is a giant threat because it can go ahead and set up the Trick Room Nasty plot, and it is a Z move user, so he can go ahead and run that Ghost EMZ. I do have one tech for that set this week, so I'm definitely not planning on losing to it. He has Crocodile right here, which can go ahead and pressure my. Lopunny with its Choice Scarf, I could definitely see Scarf Moxie being a thing, since it does outspeed my Landorus T right here, but it really doesn't deal with Landorus T Shaman. I have run Shuka Berry and Polion a lot, so we definitely have to expect that, which spoilers, and Polion is running a Shuka Berry as my damage reducing berry this week. And then of course it's also going to go ahead and struggle against Phase Dev Gudra, so not really sure what he wants to run with that. Alakazam right here is one of the biggest threats, because if he runs Choice Scarf, it can nail a few Focus Blasts, my Weavile is not a check to that. Weavile can obviously Pursuit Trap it, but I have to keep Colder Berry in mind, so definitely just gotta see what I wanna do. I'm not bringing Gudra, so I really can't bring the Assault Vest set to hard check that. And even if I brought that set, like, Spec Psy Shock would do a ton of damage, so... Alakazam, just a really good breaker against me. And Jolteon right here is definitely... has an interesting matchup. Doesn't really deal with Landorus, because if I invest properly and have a Yachi Beer, I can actually take two HP Ices, and it doesn't deal with Shaman well at all. It also doesn't deal with AV Reuniclus, which I've brought a few times, so... Don't really know whether he wants to bring it or not. Entei right here, not a very good Pokemon against my team either. I really have a really good matchup right here. Entei does not deal with the Landorus T, it does not deal with Gudra at all, but it's Fizduff. And then Deontay doesn't really deal with that at all, because if I do run Bibiri Berry, I can go ahead and take an Iron Head, and then just knock that out with a Rock-type attack, so he has to keep that in mind too. Terrakion right here is one of his better breakers, because if he does SD, he can go ahead and outspeed everything. I think SD Rock Polish Terrakion is probably going to be one of his better win cons right here, I could definitely see that being a problem. So I just gotta be careful about that, but I can deal with it with Lander ST if I just keep that healthy. Fizdef Shaman can take a one hit because it's not a Z-move user, so that's very helpful. Salamence right here would be a potent setup sweeper, but it really struggles against all my priority. Fake out Quick Attack Megalope and the Ice Shard Weavile. Could be a Yachi Berry set, but I don't know, I feel like he'll just leave it off the board. And then finally Comfy right here, which struggles against Empoleon, but the Calmine set with Aromatherapy, Triage, Draining Kiss could definitely be a problem right here. And yeah, that's going to be his team. Let's go ahead and talk about my six Pokemon. Okay, starting off my team right here, I have Phaeton, my Weavile, which is my prep for Trick Room Crafagrius. I'm definitely expecting that set to come, just because I don't have very good Ghost Resists right here. And I can go ahead and take an HP Fighting, guaranteed with this Chapel Berry, and then I can go ahead and knock it out with Knock Off plus Ice Shard right here, so that's definitely very good. And I'm definitely expecting HP Fighting over Willisp to be his moveset against this thing, because Willisp wouldn't really help him out a ton. I would still definitely get two knockoffs off, and that would put it in range of Fake Out for Megalopony, so... This way I can guarantee take the HP fighting and check that thing. So if I see Cofagrigus, this thing's never coming in until Cofagrigus is in. That's basically the idea right here. He has also the Crocodile, which this can go ahead and check with Ice Shard. If it's a Scarf, he also has the Salamence, so I can go ahead and Ice Shard that if Dragon Dance ends up being too scary right here. And the priority is just really nice. The one thing that this thing struggles with is the Milotic in particular. I guess Scarf Cartana too, but mainly Milotic is his defensive pivot into this Pokemon, so just gotta watch out for that, and let's go ahead and move on to my second Pokemon. Okay, second Pokemon I have right here is Grisidia, my Shaman, which is earning a Tanga Berry set. The main reason I have a Tanga Berry is for the Cartana. This is my Cartana check, and if he ends up predicting my Shaman to come in and expecting a Phase Death set, and goes for Swords Dance, without the Tanga Berry, I would actually die to a plus 2x Scissor. But this way I can go ahead and guarantee take that and then knock it out with Hidden Power Fire. 
if he has focus sash i still put him in range to fake out a rice shard so that's a good scenario right here i also have another perform f priority on my next pokemon here as you guys are going to see i'm actually running synthesis because i definitely want to be able to reliably recover against something like a choice locked out crocodile or maybe like a jolteon that's another thing this thing helps with a choice specs jolteon would be able to go ahead and two it ko me with signal beam but because of my tanga berry i can naturally take those and get some good damage off with earth power so that's a good scenario right here really just my kurtana check my jolteon check can maybe help out against crocodile too but let's go ahead and move on to my next Pokemon. Okay, third super effective damage reducing berry I have right here is Gofad Tisa, my Empoleon, which is earning a Shuka Berry. It's a really good check to Dragon Dance Mega Altaria because I can go ahead and take an Earthquake and then maybe Ice Beam or Toxic it, which would guarantee put it in range of either my double priority from my Megalopony or my Ice Shard from Weavile. I have Aqua Jet as a form of priority on this too because it could be really good against something like the Crocodile. If Scarf Moxie ends up being a big problem, I can just go ahead and Aqua Jet that to pick it off. It's also good against Entei. Bandit Entei is a giant threat, and it's also good against Terrakion right here. If he does end up bringing the setup Terrakion, which is a giant threat against my team, and I do end up weakening it with another Pokemon, I can go ahead and knock that out with Aqua Jet too. This is also my Stealth Rocker for the team right here. I definitely want Rocks for my next Pokemon right here, which is actually my win condition. Toxic is also able to go ahead and help out against the Mega Altaria right here, which is very good. Shuka Berry also helps out against the Crocodile, so those are my first three damage reducing berry Pokemon right here. Let's go ahead and get right into my win condition. Okay, first up on the second half of the team right here, I have my fourth damage reducing berry Mon right here is the Beery Berry Deonsi, which is my win condition this game. Basically, the Trick Room Combine set right here, which I brought week one, definitely does very good in this matchup right here too. I'm running Earth Power because it's able to go ahead and pressure Pokemon like the Kartana harder, as well as the Entei, whereas Power Gem would actually not be able to knock out Kartana without a Combine boost. So I figured that Earth Power would be my better bet right here since it's also able to go ahead and hit Entei, and I really don't need Power Gem since Moonblast. As you can see, the Moonblast coverage does, does, does super well against this team. The only other Pokemon that can actually take me on is Melodic. If he brings like a Spidef Melodic, I might actually have to weaken that with something else, but if it's not Max Fizdef, it's getting blown away by Weavile and Megalopony anyway, so... This is going to be a very easy win for Deontay right here, the way I see it. I really don't see it having too much trouble. Bibiri Berry helps me set up on Pokemon like Iron Tail, Mega Altaria. Gotta be careful about plus one Earthquake, and then I can go ahead and sponge like random HP Steels, as well as an Iron Head from Entei, so that's very helpful right here. Let's go ahead and get right into my second to last Pokemon. Okay, second to last Pokemon I have right here is Mike My Lander ST, which is earning a Defog U-Turn set with two special attacks right here. It's really fizzed up, it's pretty much max, and it's meant to go ahead and check Pokemon like... Kartana, it's a secondary Kartana check alongside Shaman. It's also a secondary Crocodile check alongside Shaman, but more importantly, it gives me a switch into the Entei, as well as the Terrakion in the worst case scenario right here. The reason I'm running special is because of two reasons, actually. They guaranteed Oko's the Kartana because of its terrible speed off, and if I do want to use this as a pivot into Entei, I need to expect to get Sacred Fire burnt, and I don't want my Earthquake power to be halved, so I just have Earth power on here instead, which can go ahead and help me out. I'll also towards intim Intimidate from Crocodile, which is very good too. Hidden Power Ice right here just as a secondary move against stuff like Salamence and Mega Altaria. Maybe Crocodile too, although I think Earth Power is stronger in that scenario. Yachi Berry is my Resist Berry on this Pokemon, so this is the final Resist Berry on the team besides all my other ones, of course. I do have Mega Lopony as my last Mon right here. And yeah, that's going to be Lander's T. Just a good pivot. I'm not running Rocks on it. I actually have Defog because I have a Rocks on my Empoleon this week. I think Rocks and Polion is a better setter, so let's go ahead and move on to my final Pokemon. Okay, and finally we have the only Pokemon on the team that is actually not running a Resist Barrier. We have Mega Lopony right here, which is obviously running the Lopony Tite, or Lopanite, I guess it's called, with Fake Out Quick Attack and Return High Jump Kick right here. The double priority right here is super nice to revenge kill Pokemon like Salamence, as well as the Mega Altaria, if their setup does end up getting out of hand right here. It's also able to go ahead and knock out an Alakazam with just Fake Out and Quick Attack alone if he doesn't have any bulk investment, which is very good. Good at revenge killing Jolteon too. All those feral Pokemon really don't appreciate this thing at all. And then of course we just have our two attacks right here. Pretty basic set, just a good attacker right here which can go ahead and pressure his team as a whole. Hydjunka can actually 2-hit KO Milotic if I do get my rocks up with Empoleon, so that's very good too. Getting rid of Milotic is really important for Deontay right here, so gotta go ahead and do that. And yeah, that's going to be my team. The match will actually be going live later today in about, I think, 6 or 8 hours, so I'll see you all then. Later.